few things that raise the ire of ordinary people upon reading stories of people of power and privilege, whether it's in politics or in religion, who use their positions of influence to personally enrich themselves and line their pockets through backroom deals and insider information. And that is why a story in this week's Torah portion of Akev seems on the surface surprising and even shocking. The background to the story is Moses is recounting to the Jewish people just weeks before their entry into the land of Israel, the events that took place 40 years ago. He says it was at that time after coming down from Mount Sinai, I descended with the tablets of stone in my hand, and upon witnessing the shocking scene of the Jewish people engaged in idolatry of worshiping the golden calf, in a fit of rage, I threw down the tablets upon the ground and broke them. Consequently, when God desired to destroy and annihilate the Jewish people, I pleaded for your safety, and I went to God and I cried out to forgive them and give them another chance. After 40 days and 40 nights, God acquiesced to my request, and he says, at that time, Carve out for yourself two stone tablets like the first one, and I will inscribe upon them the writings of the Ten Commandments the way I did the first time. The Talmud, ever atten attentive to the nuance of the way the Torah mentions this incident, wonders what is the meaning of the word Pesalecha, carve out for yourself. Moses did not carve out stones specifically for himself. The tablets for the Ten Commandments were for the entire Jewish people. What is the meaning of God telling Moses, carve for yourself the stone? And where does Moses find that stone in the first place? The answer the Talmud gives is that God miraculously deposited a quarry, a mine of sapphire in Moses' tent and God instructed him to go over there and carve out the stone. And then the Talmud continues with something perplexing. It says that Moses only became wealthy from the refuse, from the leftover shards, the bits that he carved out from the sapphire quarry after he fashioned these two stone tablets, all the leftover pieces of sapphire, he was instructed he can keep them. And that is how Moses became exceedingly and fabulously wealthy. From the pesolet, from the leftover pieces of the tablets. How are we to understand the story that God tells Moses, carve for yourself, that I'm giving you a, an, an investment opportunity, I'm giving you a get-rich-quick scheme, that I'm going to give you the sapphire quarry, you're going to carve it out, and you can secretly keep for yourself all the leftover pieces of sapphire from the very bedrock of the stone that, is the, that serves as the purpose of the Ten Commandments for the Torah of the Jewish people. That's how God wants Moses to become wealthy. What kind of story is this? Had Moses wanted to become wealthy, he had numerous opportunities in his past. He lived a life of luxury. He grew up in a palace. He left that behind to join his downtrodden and dejected enslaved brethren. He gave up a life of leadership in Africa as a king to join his people. At the splitting of the sea, Moses eschewed all the activity of the Jewish people gathering the gold and silver of the Egyptians who had washed ashore. And Moses is elsewhere looking for mitzvahs. Moses is not interested in material wealth. So why is God pushing onto him this seemingly distasteful way that of becoming wealthy that all the Jewish people are going to say, how did Moshe become wealthy? Through the Torah? Through the tablets? Are we not enjoined by the same Talmud in numerous occasions that one is not to use the Torah as a means of personal gain? Doesn't the Talmud warn us of the negative consequences of those who try to profit or materially benefit from Torah? Torah 
is God's eternal gift and birthright to every Jew. God did not charge for the Torah. Moses did not charge for the Torah. Moses received no remuneration for teaching. It wasn't a paid rabbinic position. Why then does Moses need to get his wealth through this means? God could have compensated him or made him wealthy in any number of ways. One of the profound insights to this story is from one of the great mystical and spiritual minds of the last several hundred years. The Rabbi Rashab writes that this is no simple story to be understood literally. As a matter of fact, he writes, why is it that the first set of tablets had no leftover shards, no leftover pieces, only the second ones did? It is because he explained the first set of tablets came directly from God. That happened before the descent, the spiritual fall of the Jewish people, of the golden calf. The second set of tablets represents the return, the overcoming of the obstacle, and the reunification of God and the Jewish people. That is why the first set of tablets were given directly by God to Moses without Moses needing to fashion the stone. Because at that time, the Jewish people were worthy of not only the writing of the Ten Commandments, but even the foundation, the stone upon which it was written, also were godly and perfect. And there, there is no leftovers. Everything is perfectly calibrated. There is no refuse. There is no garbage. But the second set of tablets that occurred post-sin represents the Jewish people in a later period where we are trying to refine and restructure that relationship. At that point, on the level of returning and of repentance, there, although God gave us a second chance and he was going to give us the Ten Commandments again, thereby he told Moshe, but the writing, the stone upon which it will be written, has to come from you. Every endeavor of return, there has to be some movement from you. I'm not going to give you the gift 100%. Half of it is going to be from you, and when you give me the stone, I will do the other 50%. I will write it. That is why the second set of tablets had to be fashioned by Moses on behalf of the Jewish people. But here is the great insight. One would think that the second set of tablets were diminished by the fact that the stone were man-made and not godly created? The answer, no, it's actually just the opposite. It is from the leftover, it is from the what seemingly is the garbage, the refuse, the challenge of the second set of tablets, that is where Moses becomes wealthy, he writes. Because true wealth can only come as a result of our own initiative. My friends, think about this for a moment. Moses knew his entire life that everything that he was, was a gift from God. Moses was chosen for that vocation when he was an infant, when he was an infant, and even before then, when he was an embryo. Moses was born Moses. And therefore the Torah tells us that Moses was the most humble person who ever lived because Moses understood that God could have chosen anyone. God could could choose any Joe and make him a Moses because that's a gift. But where was Moses' personal accomplishment? What was Moses' achievement? Where was Moses' wealth created from? If God makes Moshe wealthy, it's great, but it's God making Moses wealthy. Ha'eshir Moshe means the Talmud is telling us how did Moses become wealthy? Moses becomes wealthy through the 40 days and the next 40 days and the third 40 days and 40 nights when he lays his life on the line for the Jewish people. Through the 40 years of patiently and faithfully shepherding the Jewish people through the desert and giving up his life and not going into the land of Israel. That is the wealth of Moses where he realized that his wealth will come when he becomes Moses, not when God declares him Moses. And God gives him that opportunity and tells him that I am not going to give you the tablets again. You're going to carve them out. And while you may think it's a lesser form, you shall know that your true wealth, 
your true potential will come out from the shards, from the broken pieces of these tablets. That's where you will find the deepest depth of your personality, the deepest potential, and the highest scale that you can achieve can only come when you decide that from those moments of dejection, of bitterness, and of challenge, you will use those as a springboard for great growth. This is the meaning, he writes, of this extraordinary statement in the Talmud that Moses becomes wealthy through the shards, through the leftovers, the bits, the refuse of the tablets. It means is that from the, all the negative stories and consequences that emerges from the second set of tablets that Moses gets as a result of the Jewish people and himself deciding that they're going to turn over a new leaf. And while it's not never going to be as pristine as it once was, but the, but the journey of return is much more meaningful and much more powerful, it is those moments of pesolet, of rejection, of overcoming of difficulty. That is the true wealth of the Jewish people. That is the true wealth of Moses. My friends, the reason why I find this commentary so profound and so moving is because it is a great message. It is an eternal message for all of us. If Moses can find his opportunity for wealth by realizing that no matter all the gifts that God gave him, he still needed to achieve on his own. And God allows him to find that space that from the space of the second set of tablets that come as a result of pining for return, of accelerated emotional reattachment, that's what is the true wealth of Moses. How much more so for us in our lives that we should never get crestfallen or dejected when every spiritual and even material achievement comes through hard work, through the laborious process of one step forward, two steps backward, where every achievement seems to be we con are confronted by challenge one after the other, we must remember that the true wealth, the eternal spiritual wealth of ourselves will come only when we engage, not run away from all the leftover, the darkness, the, the shards of life that seem to prick us, but we engage with it 100% as Moses found out in his time, that his real value, not his material wealth, of course, but his legacy of Moses came as a result of what he was willing to do for the Jewish people, not what God gave him. And that is why the Torah tells us that the greatest accomplishment of Moses' life, when the Torah summarizes his entire life at the end of Deuteronomy, Rashi points out that the greatest achievement of Moses was that he broke the tablets. Because only when he broke the tablets did he learn that he can create something from that challenge and from that disappointment that will transcend everything that happened in his life until then. Because when he is willing to engage with his own, with his own skeletons, with his own shortcomings, he becomes the wealthy Moses. So too, how much more so in our lives that we should never, ever look at every, any, any challenge that God gives us, God forbid, as something negative. Rather, it is a possibility that God says, I want you to achieve. I want you to realize that it's only from the pesolet of life that you will find your greatest potential, your greatest gift, and your greatest wealth in being a human being and Jew. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.